Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about break-even analysis. You know, there's ways you can illustrate these things graphically and all sorts of other stuff. I think that's excessively complicated. What you need to know, though, is a break-even uh, number is very, very important, it's your, or your break-even point. You need to know how many units you're selling or how many iterations of a particular process that you need to perform so that your firm no longer loses money. Okay? Or if you're like the typical entrepreneur firm that may lose money the first, second, or third year, you need to know exactly how much money you're going to be losing and how many more units you need to sell to meet whatever your financial goals are for that particular point in time. Right? So when you meet your break-even point, you know if you sell more or perform more iterations, you're going to be making a profit, and if you sell below it, your firm is going to be losing money. Okay? But you need to know what that point is, and that's important. Think about if you're getting financing. Think about if you are um, trying to communicate to venture capitalists at the profitability of your firm. And quite frankly, think about where you need to be prioritizing your effort and how you need to be motivating workers and exactly where you need to be competing. This break-even analysis is so important. It's probably one of your most fundamental numbers. So let's look at a couple of equations that will help you with the break-even analysis. So the first one you can have zero is equal to the selling price. Again, think about sweaters. Let's say I make sweaters and I sell those sweaters for $100. So you put in, I'm selling it for $100. At $100 is a sweater minus the variable cost, i.e. how much does it cost to make the sweater. Let's say it costs $75 to make the sweater. Times the number of units you're going to sell, like I'm going to sell 50 sweaters, minus the fixed cost. In other words, how much does it cost me to own the factory or the plant that makes those sweaters, right? And let's say you do your analysis and you don't break even, right? Okay, so you probably know, okay, I didn't break even. What if I increase the sales price of my sweaters to like 150? What does that do? Um, what if I can do some things like Lean Six Sigma to reduce my variable costs? What does that do? Uh, how about I sell more sweaters? Um, fixed cost, that's a little bit hard, uh, unless, you're, if, unless you haven't started out, maybe you buy a cheaper factory or something like that. That's a hard one to negotiate. Okay. Now, if you'd like to look at this formula a different way, you can say that the fixed cost needs to be equal to the selling price minus the variable cost times the number of units sold. Okay. Pretty simple stuff. Now. It's easy to do this for a well-established firm, but as a new firm, there may be certain costs that you're not sure whether you should interpret that as a fixed cost or a variable cost, right? Um, let's say, for example, you're dealing with like maintenance, uh, repairs, uh, hiring consultants. Well, that may be something that you have to count on doing every single month consistently, therefore be a fixed cost, but you're not sure because it may be a variable cost, but you don't really know because you're not exactly a well-established firm yet, or maybe you haven't even started, so you're a little unsure. And this is what we call a QC, or a questionable cost. Okay? And I'm going to show you both equations, and then I'll kind of talk you through the rationale. So you take zero, and this is what we call, let's say that questionable cost, you don't know what that cost is. Let's say you decide, for assumption purposes, to interpret that questionable cost, like the maintenance or consultants, as a fixed cost. Let's say that's your assumption. So you take zero, okay, you've got your selling price, minus your variable cost, times the number of units sold, minus your fixed cost, also minus this questionable cost that you think is going to be a fixed cost. Okay? Now, let's say you choose to interpret that as a variable cost. Okay? Same thing. Zero equals... Um, selling price minus variable cost minus the questionable cost divided by the number of units for which this would be a questionable cost times the number of sales minus the fixed cost. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Look at the, the greater of these two numbers, the greater break-even point you know that if you sell more than whichever the greater of these two break-even points is, it doesn't matter. You know that your firm is going to make a profit. And you know that if you're below the smaller of these two break-even points, you know that you're going to lose money no matter what. Okay, So it gives you some sort of forecasting. However, you may need to investigate further if your number is somewhere in between these two break-even points. 
and then this is where the uncertainty happens. But a lot of times, it's very obvious that you're either way above the break-even point or way below whatever the break-even point is. Right? And these can be switched, right? This can be greater, this can be smaller, and vice versa. So if you're so good above one, you know you're going to make break-even, and if you're so far below the other one, you know you're not going to make a break-even. Okay? So this is another way to look at it. And again, this is very helpful for entrepreneurial firms that don't exactly have a complete grasp of their costs just yet. It may take a couple of years before you get the hang of it. Awesome. Well, we're going to continue uh, these series, and we're going to look at some pro forma uh, analyses. I think you'll enjoy them. As always, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, subscribe, and make sure you comment below. Awesome. I'll see you in the next video.